And now, Sveit Svavarsson, he is representing the uh, Intact Iceland organization. Hi. Good day. My name is Sveit Svavarsson, and I, am the, I will be speaking on behalf of Intact Iceland. I am very happy to be able to attend today as a last minute add to the list of speakers. So thank you for allowing me to attend. Intact Iceland is not affiliated with any political party or any religion or ethnic group. We, just, we have just one mission and one mission only, and that is to advocate for the right of children not to be subjected to non-therapeutic genital cutting. It's not about the parents' rights, it's about the child's rights. They are the ones that are going to have to live with the consequences for the rest of their life. We believe that we have a moral duty to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. We know that when parents choose to circumcise the child, it is because they love them and they want the very best for them. Unfortunately, the child does not feel its parents' love during the circumcision and is left with a painful healing process that it cannot understand or express itself about. There are many ways to circumcise there, there are many ways to circumcise an infant boy, but no matter what method is used, the steps are as follows. Step one, possibly but not necessarily the administration of anesthesia. For example, a cloth dip it in wine or sugary beverage that the infant can suck on. Step two, possibly an application of antiseptic agent. Step three, the separation of the foreskin from the glands. On smaller children, the foreskin is fused to the glands of the penis, pretty much in the same way that a fingernail is fused to a finger. In order to circumcise a baby boy, the foreskin has to be forcibly be separated from the gland's penis by inserting a blunt probe under the foreskin, and then it's swept around the glands in full circles, pretty much like someone showing a blunt instrument under your fingernail and running it back and forth and back until your nail pops off. One can only imagine how excruciatingly painful that must be, especially for a little baby. Fourth step is the clamping or crushing of the tissue to stop the blood flow. Step five, cutting off the clamping of the... Uh, I should have printed out the... <laughs> I should, should, have the I should have had the speech printed out. Uh, it's, oh, sorry. Mm -mm -mm. So, sorry about that. <laughs> it, all right, and here we go. So, step five, cutting off clamping of the foreskin, also called amputation of the foreskin. When the skin has been cut, clamped off, it exposes the glands that otherwise would be protected from friction and bacteria. Step six, possibly rinsing the wound, al wound in alcohol. Step seven, wound, dre wound dressing. Step eight, healing process. According to a Danish circumcision clinic, it can take up to six weeks for the wound to heal completely, and the final res result can be seen. Can be seen. Many think that circumcision is a minor and insignificant procedure, provided that anesthesia is used, and some even claim that the boys sleep during the circumcision because the pain management is so good. That it's not possible unless one does a general anesthesia that is very dangerous for children under two months old, and doctors try to avoid for children under six months old. Even the dorsal penile nerve block that is considered the best commonly available method of pain management, leaves the underside of the penis receptive to pain. When people think the babies are asleep, it is actually a state of shock the child can go into as a way to escape the overwhelming pain. As recently as 1999, it was common for people to claim babies could not feel pain until they were a year old. We, of course, know better than that today. All the painkillers children are given are wine, lollipop, sugar, water, su sugar water, or other sugary beverage to take the pain away. 
Would you think that one of those things were enough for you to receive as a pain management before you got your, pain, before you got your nail ripped off? You as an adult with cognitive abilities the infant does not have would at least know what was happening. The little baby has no idea and has no way of expressing the fear that it is exper experiencing. Babies, and especially babies born before time, feel more intense pain than adults. When an infant, child, when an infant or child is subjected to circumcision without his consent, it is not only a part of his body that is taken from him. The right to choose is taken from him also. A child whose genitals are left intact can always choose to undergo circumcision for religious any other reason when he is mature enough to make his own decision about his body. But an infant or child who has been subjected to circumcision can never undo what has been done to him. Not only are you taking a healthy body part away, but with every surgery there is a risk. And there have been many cases of babies having been penis amputated during the circumcision. The initial firm behind the popular circumcision tool, Morgenklam, lost lawsuits in relation to circumcision that went wrong and has since gone out of business in the US and in, and in 2000, the US Food and Drug Administration issued a public health notice about the Moenklap and Gomco clamps after receiving about 20 injury reports a year since 1996, including lacer lacerations, hemorrhaging, penile amputation, and urethral damage. Still, the Moen clamp is used today. When there is much disagreement regarding the potential benefits and harms of circumcision, isn't it best that the choice be left to the individual himself when he is old enough to exercise informed consent? We want to emphasize that we are not opposed to circumcision when the owner of the penis himself has consented to the surgery, nor do we oppose circumcision when it's performed for a valid medical reason. Why then, it may be asked, do we oppose non-therapeutic circumcision while not opposing medically indicated circumcision? The answer is that surgery to correct pathological condition is valid when conservative measures have failed and the efficacy of the surgery to correct the condition has been adequately demonstrated. But to perform a surgery in the absence of a pathological condition violates one of the cardinal presets of medical ethics. First, do no harm. Or to put that in plain English, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Surgery is never without risk. And amputations of a body part necessarily entails loss of all of the functions and sensations of that body part. It also can severely and irreparably impair the man's body image. Even when a circumcision is performed flawlessly, if there was no pathological condition in the first place, the circumcision is a harm in and of itself, just as any other unnecessary surgery or amputation would be. It has been claimed that a minimum age for circumcision, barring the involuntary circumcision of minors, would constitute a de facto ban on Jews on Muslims in Iceland. That is simply not true. We welcome them with open arms, but we believe that children's rights must take precedence. In fact, there is a group called Jews Against Circumcision that agrees with us on this and has endorsed the proposed involuntary circumcision ban. They sent a letter to Althingi in which they stated, among other things, that, begin quote, we reject the proposition that involuntary circumcision is a necessary part of being Jewish. It isn't. A Jewish girl is no less Jewish than her brother. And a Jewish boy born to a Jewish mother is no less Jewish by virtue of not having had part of his penis cut off. Jewishness is a product of one's genes, one's heritage, one's family life and upbringing, one's values, one's traditions and culture. And in the case of Judaism, it's a product of one's religious beliefs. Quote ends. No one is proposing to prevent parents from bringing up their children as they see fit and raising them with their own religion, values, traditions, and culture. But freedom of religion cannot supplant the rule of law, and it cannot supersede fundamental principles and norms regarding basic human rights. As Jews Against Circumcision has stated, we believe that one person's right to practice his, her own, his or her own religion ends where another person's body begins. Mm -mm -mm. 
We believe that one person's right to practice one's religion ends for another person's point of view. We believe that one person's fundamental right of religious liberty is delimited by every other person, even more fundamental right not to be physically harmed. We believe that the only person who has a right to cause to have his or hers genitals or any other body part mutilated, deformed, scarred, or surgically altered in any way is the individual himself or herself. No one else has a right to decide what parts of a boy's penis he gets to keep and what parts to cut off. We do not consider that a radical or even a controversial posi position, much less an anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic or anti-Muslim one. In all the contrary, we consider it to be simply in accordance with contemporary norms regarding fundamental human rights and human dignity. Thank you for listening.